The Epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Philippians Greetings from Paul and Timothy, bondservants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, with the bishops and deacons. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine making request for you all with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ, just as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers with me of grace. For God is my witness, how greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel, so that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even from envy and strife, and some also from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my chains, but the latter out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and in this I rejoice, yes, and will rejoice. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed. But with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor, yet what I shall choose, I cannot tell. For I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy of faith, that your rejoicing for me may be more abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again. Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel and not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a proof of perdition, but to you of salvation, and that from God. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw in me, and now here is in me. The Book of Joshua Chapter 14 These are the areas which the children of Israel inherited in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar the priest, Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel distributed as an inheritance to them. Their inheritance was by lot, as the Lord had commanded by the hand of Moses, for the nine tribes and the half-tribe. For Moses had given the inheritance of the two tribes and the half-tribe on the other side of the Jordan. 
but to the Levites he had given no inheritance among them. For the children of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. And they gave no part to the Levites in the land, except cities to dwell in, with their common lands for their livestock and their property. As the Lord had commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal. And Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was forty years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these forty-five years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, here I am this day, eighty-five years old. As yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him, and gave Hebron to Caleb the son of Jephunneh as an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron formerly was Kirjath Arba. Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim. Then the land had rest from war. Chapter 15 So this was the lot of the tribe of the children of Judah, according to their families. The border of Edom at the wilderness of Zin, southward, was the extreme southern boundary. And their southern border began at the shore of the Salt Sea, from the bay that faces southward. Then it went out to the southern side of the ascent of Akrabim, passed along to Zin, ascended on the south side of Kadesh Barnea, passed along to Hezron, went up to Adar, and went around to Karkaya. From there it passed toward Asmon and went out to the brook of Egypt, and the border ended at the sea. This shall be your southern border. The east border was the Salt Sea as far as the mouth of the Jordan. And the border on the northern quarter began at the Bay of the Sea at the mouth of the Jordan. The border went up to Beth Hogla and passed north of Beth Araba. And the border went up to the stone of Bohan the son of Reuben. Then the border went up toward Deba from the valley of Achor, and it turned northward toward Gilgal, which is before the ascent of Adumim, which is on the south side of the valley. The border continued toward the waters of En Shemesh, and ended at En Rogel. And the border went up by the valley of the son of Hinnom to the southern slope of the Jebusite city, which is Jerusalem. The border went up to the top of the mountain that lies before the valley of Hinnom westward, which is at the end of the valley of Rephaim northward. Then the border went around from the top of the hill to the fountain of the water of Nephtoah, and extended to the cities of Mount Ephraim, and the border went around to Bela, which is kirjath Jearim. Then the border turned westward from Bela to Mount Seir, passed along to the side of Mount Jearim on the north, which is Kesselon, went down to Beth Shemesh, and passed on to Timnah. And the border went out to the side of Ekron, northward. Then the border went around to Shikron, passed along to Mount Bela, and extended to Jabneel 
and the border ended at the sea. The west border was the coastline of the Great Sea. This is the boundary of the children of Judah, all around, according to their families. Now to Caleb the son of Jephunneh he gave a share among the children of Judah, according to the commandment of the Lord to Joshua, namely Kirjath Arba, which is Hebron. Arba was the father of Anak. Caleb drove out the three sons of Anak from there, Shishai, Ahiman, and Talmai, the children of Anak. Then he went up from there to the inhabitants of Deba. Formerly the name of Deba was Kirjath Sepha. And Caleb said, He who attacks Kirjath Sepha and takes it, to him I will give Aksa my daughter as wife. So Othniel the son of Kenaz, the brother of Caleb, took it, and he gave him Aksa his daughter as wife. Now it was so, when she came to him, that she persuaded him to ask her father for a field. So she dismounted from her donkey, and Caleb said to her, What do you wish? She answered, Give me a blessing. Since you have given me land in the south, give me also springs of water. So he gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. This was the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Judah, according to their families. The cities at the limits of the tribe of the children of Judah, toward the border of Edom in the south, were Kabzeel, Eda, Jaga, Kina, Dimona, Adada, Kedesh, Hazor, Ithnan, Ziph, Telim, Bealoth, Hazor, Hadata, Kerioth, Hezron, which is Hazor, Amam, Shema, Molada, Hazagada, Heshmon, Beth Pelit, Hazashul, Beersheba, Bizjothja, Baala, Ijim, Ezem, El Tolad, Kisel, Horma, Ziklag, Madmana, Sansana, Libeoth, Shilhim, Ain, and Rimon. All the cities are twenty nine with their villages. In the lowland, Eshtail, Zora, Ashna, Zanoa, Enganim, Tapua, Enum, Jarmuth, Adullam, Soko, Azika, Shereim, Adathaim, Gidira, and Gidirathaim, fourteen cities with their villages. Zenon, Hadasha, Migdalgad, Dilian, Mizpah, Jokthil, Lakish, Bozkath, Eglon, Cabin, Lamas, Kithlish, Gediroth, Beth Dagon, Naamah, and Makeda, sixteen cities with their villages. Libna, Ether, Ashan, Jifta, Ashna, Nizib, Kiila, Akzib, and Marisha, nine cities with their villages. Ekron, with its towns and villages, from Ekron to the sea, all that lay near Ashdod, with their villages. Ashdod, with its towns and villages. Gaza, with its towns and villages, as far as the brook of Egypt and the great sea, with its coastline. And in the mountain country. Shema, Jatta, Soko, Dana, Kirjath Sana, which is Deba, Anab, Eshtemo, Anim, Goshen, Holon, and Gilo, eleven cities with their villages. Arab, Duma, Eshian, Janum, Beth Tapua, Afika, Humta, Kirjath Arba, which is Hebron, and Zior, nine cities with their villages. Maon, Carmel, Ziph, Jutta, Jezreel, Jokdium, Zanoah, Cain, Gibeah, and Timna, ten cities with their villages. Halhul, Beth Zur, Gida, Meirath, Beth Anoth, 
and Elzikon, six cities with their villages, Kirjath Baal, which is Kirjath Jirim, and Rabba, two cities with their villages. In the wilderness, Beth Araba, Midan, Zikeka, Nibshan, the city of Salt, and En Gedi, six cities with their villages. As for the Jebusites, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the children of Judah could not drive them out. But the Jebusites dwell with the children of Judah at Jerusalem to this day. The Book of Proverbs Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. When pride comes, then come shame. But with the humble is wisdom. The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. The righteousness of the blameless will direct his way aright. But the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright will deliver them, but the unfaithful will be caught by their lust. When a wicked man dies, his expectation will perish, and the hope of the unjust perishes. The righteous is delivered from trouble, and it comes to the wicked instead. The hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge the righteous will be delivered. When it goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices, and when the wicked perish, there is jubilation. By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. He who is devoid of wisdom despises his neighbor, but a man of understanding holds his peace. A talebearer reveals secrets, but he who is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter. Where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors there is safety. He who is surety for a stranger will suffer, but one who hates being surety is secure. A gracious woman retains honor, but ruthless men retain riches. The merciful man does good for his own soul, but he who is cruel troubles his own flesh. The wicked man does deceptive work, but he who sows righteousness will have a sure reward. As righteousness leads to life, so he who pursues evil pursues it to his own death. Those who are of a perverse heart are an abomination to the Lord, but the blameless in their ways are his delight. Though they join forces, the wicked will not go unpunished, but the posterity of the righteous will be delivered. As a ring of gold in a swine's snout, so is a lovely woman who lacks discretion. The desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. There is one who scatters, yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. The people will curse him who withholds grain, but blessing will be on the head of him who sells it. He who earnestly seeks good finds favor, but trouble will come to him who seeks evil. He who trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will flourish like foliage. He who troubles his own house will inherit the wind, and the fool will be servant to the wise of heart. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. If the righteous will be recompensed on the earth, how much more the ungodly and the sinner.